Hello, and welcome to Jenkins Docs Office Hours. Today is November 30th. Uh, this is the EU US edition. Uh, and today we have myself, Kevin Martins, Mark Waite, and Bruno Verachten. Uh, on the agenda, so uh, last latest LTS was released um, just a couple weeks ago. Contributor Spotlight, uh, the Jenkins Contributor Summit, FOSDEM. Uh, Oh, yeah, and I think we're on the same page, Mark, because I do have the sponsor attributes uh, one item down. So uh, good to good to see. Um, so yeah, adding sponsor sponsor attributes to Jenkins.io. Uh, the packaging uh, repo recently had an update to uh, support U Unix domain sockets. Uh, GSOC 2024 preps uh, ongoing and the version documentation site for Jenkins.io. Uh, Mark, you mentioned there were some other things you wanted to add to the agenda. Are they there or is there anything else to add on that? You got them. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, so starting off, so again, uh, LTS 2.426.1 was released on November 15th. Everything went well. And uh, Darren and Mark did a live stream the next day uh, going over all the new features and fun stuff. Uh, LTS 2.426.2 is set to release on December 13th. And the release candidate was... Uh, actually pushed today, so that is available via the developer mailing list. Uh, next up, so the Contributor Spotlight site, which is something that we recently started discussing, is now live. Um, this is fantastic. This is the result of months of work and research and determination by uh, Alyssa Tong, Bruno Verachten, John Mark Messin, myself, Chris Stern uh, has done so much work on the site, making sure that this is working and uh, live. Uh, Hervé Lemur, Christina Pisagalli, like there's just been so many folks working on this and helping with this. Um, just thanks to everyone. This is uh, fantastic to have. Uh, so the contributor spotlight side is live and our first contributor to spotlight is Alexander Brandis. So um, if you're not familiar with Alex, he's part of the Jenkins governance board. He's been part of uh, the Jenkins community since 2019. And uh, yeah, he's just been a really great uh, pillar to have as part of the Jenkins community for the last handful of years. So thanks to Alex and uh, really happy to be able to spotlight him. Uh, we're gonna be releasing new and publishing new uh, contributor spotlights every two weeks. We wanna give time for the existing contributor to have time and be highlighted, uh, give some room just in case there are other announcements that need to be made. We don't wanna take away from anyone. The idea is the, we appreciate this work that goes into keeping Jenkins the way it is and keeping it on the cutting edge. We're highlighting, we're appreciating. Uh, we want people to know who these people, these contributors are. Uh, it's been announced via LinkedIn, Twitter. We have a blog post on the Jenkins blog and it was announced in the Gitter channel. So uh, we are putting this stuff out there. Um, we're still collecting responses. There are more to come. Uh, I still have to do mine. I know Mark just did his recently. Uh, there's a couple other folks that are still uh, we're still waiting on. So there's going to be more uh, content to come, but we do have enough right now that will be will be good for a little while. Uh, we are generating feedback and suggestions review from anyone that is willing to look at it. Um, we've been able to update and result, uh, fix some of the mobile formatting issues. Um, thanks to Chris Stern for doing all of this to help keep the site uh, looking nice and, and presentable and everything. Um, they're doing, they're up very late doing a lot of work. So um, I just have unending thanks to Chris for all of this. Um, and then something that uh, just came up in the advocacy and outreach meeting we had earlier today was that the Jenkins Contributor Spotlight page, the way it's formatted or the way it's uh, set up now uh, is if you click on the Jenkins uh, name logo here, it keeps you on the Contributor Spotlight page. Uh, whereas if you were to go to the blog, it will take you to the Jenkins.io homepage. Uh, this functionality is present in other areas. So plugins.jenkins.io, the same thing happens here. Uh, if I go to the GitHub release plugin, it's gonna just take me back to plugins.io. Uh, same thing with stories. Uh, if I go to any of the user stories, it's gonna take me to stories.jenkins.io. Um, so the question's been raised, should this be the case? Or should the contributor spotlight Jenkins logo navigate back to jenkins.io? Uh, Alyssa had pointed out that uh, if someone's not aware, they would have to click on the blog or the documentation or something else that is part of just Jenkins.io, and then they can use that to get back to the homepage. Um, however, the contributor spotlight functionality is consistent with other uh, subdomains that we have 
in the infrastructure. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, curious, Mark, Bruno, uh, what do you think? Are the, what do you have thoughts on this? Are you preferences? In fact, I've been thinking for a year that this was kind of a bug or maybe a bug in me or in bug in the website. I, I was not able to decide, but it's disturbing for me to click on Jenkins and not go to Jenkins.io. It always has been, but I don't find the time or whatever to um, file an issue or something. I was not sure if that was a problem or just me not understanding how the website is supposed to, go, to work. So for me, yes, I would prefer to have uh, to go back to Jenkins.io in all of these sub websites whenever I click on Jenkins, but that's just personal taste. And I think my personal taste is the other direction because when I'm on the <laughs> plugin site, I want to stay there. But but it's a fair point that it's a preference thing, right? It's not a um, it's not an obvious, oh, it should always do this. I, I think pretty commonly top left takes us to the root of everything, everything. And, and so if you navigate on Contributor Spotlight and open up Alex Brandis's specific page, now you click the top left, it takes us home to Contributor Spotlight. Yeah, and likewise for plugins. So it's, it's behaving at least in some fashion as conceptually consistent, but I'm not sure that it's consistent for what users expect. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to open a can of worms, but uh, couldn't we set something with cookies, you know, like some website do with dark background or light background? <laughs> Pro no. Probably could, but I don't think that's a, a level of, I don't think we want a preference management UI on the Jenkins static website. Yes, yes, we certainly could, uh, but but I would, I would lobby against it yeah, just forget because it. let's now... That, that's just me, but I'm. I, I, there's an element of mine that's lazy and says I don't want to. I don't want to mess with this if I don't have to. If it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> well, and and if it should go, if it should always go to www.jenkins.io, then we make the change in the top level components page. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good thing to have as a discussion in in that in that context. Thank you very much, Mark and Bruno, for sharing. Uh, I, I'm actually pretty torn on both sides. I can see why it makes sense to have it go home. And I also get that it's doing the same thing other pages are doing. So yeah, um, should I just open an issue for this, Mark, on the uh, Jenkins.io repo and we can have discussion there? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good way to approach it. Yep. Okay. Okay, then I'll go ahead and open up uh, an issue on navigate for the navigation of that link and we can have more discussion there. I think that that would be really helpful and we could get more opinions because uh, right now we're at a stalemate and I'm not helping. So yeah, great. Uh, any other thoughts, uh, comments, concerns about the contributor spotlight site, Bruno and Mark, before we move on? Okay. Uh, great. So next thing on the agenda is the Jenkins Contributor Summit at FOSDEM is happening. Uh, so uh, Jean-Marc Messin has written up a nice blog post explaining what the Jenkins Contributor Summit is, important dates, uh, information, et cetera, et cetera, who to contact. Um, so all great information, really important. Uh, and then uh, we also have the Jenkins Meetup page uh, uh, actually up now. So if you are planning on attending, uh, you can register that here and share that with us. And so we'll, we'll know who's attending and who to uh, expect and who to plan for and everything like that. Um, the folks right now listed are hosting. So we actually have gotten one more attendee. That's nice. So uh, great. So great to see you there. Uh, and yeah, Obviously, there's still some time to register. Uh, Fostum is free to attend. So if you are in Brussels and you want to go, you feel free. Uh, next up, so uh, we just had a packaging uh, pull request merge. And this uh, pull request adds support for Unix domain sockets in Jenkins. Um, this user has submitted the pull request. They've explained the purpose and the, uh, the reasoning for the, mer the update. Uh, and so what I've now gone and done is created separate tickets for each reverse proxy configuration. Uh, this, create, this creates new um, 
because it's now supporting the Unix domain sockets, there's additional steps and information that needs to be added to the reverse proxy configuration uh, pages. Uh, so I've created a separate issue for each one. Uh, and for the Apache one specifically, since uh, the user contributed using Apache as their example in their uh, kind of building um, test, uh, I've tagged them in the Apache ticket to see if they'd be interested in uh, adding that documentation. Uh, the rest, we would want to have uh, people with Nginx experience or how proxy experience, Pomerium experience, et cetera, uh, kind of making sure that this is all going in there correctly, that it's not uh, upsetting anything or uh, contradicting anything that already exists because we do have what works already. Um, and uh, IP tables may be uh, a less interacted with one. It may not be as high of a choice as say Apache or Nginx. Um, so there may not be action on that, but uh, Apache and Nginx are fairly commonly used and pretty popular. So uh, more likely that we get some action there. Um, and then um, Mark, anything else on the, on that stuff, on the reverse proxy stuff or anything? Oh, that so, so the work, the option is there to do the work and it's, this is non-trivial doing this because you've got to know enough about the reverse proxy to configure it to use Unix domain sockets. And you've got to know enough about system D to configure Jenkins to use uh, Unix domain sockets. And then you've got to be able to write it into the, into the text. So it's, it, the issues are open and they are not great candidates for a brand new contributor. Gotcha. Yeah, that's good to note. Um, that's not just a simple adding some text and calling it a day. It does require right, right. verification, this, testing, et cetera. Right. And and the problem is if a brand new contributor picks it up and does it, then whoever's reviewing it has to do the verification as well and then waste time if the contributor did it wrong and didn't do a good job of verification. So it, I'd much rather, much rather we not have someone with no experience pick one of these up and offer a bad pull request it's a it, it wastes time yeah bad experiences overall for for the submitter and the reviewer right exactly it's if if we have to teach the submitter how to configure a reverse proxy in one of these web servers we've now wasted an awful lot of time right Uh, thank you very much, Mark, for adding that context and explaining uh, a bit further on what we're looking for in that regard. Uh, so next up on the agenda, we have uh, a request to adding sponsor attributions. Um, so this is an issue that was opened up by Mark. Uh, a friend from JFrog had asked that we include JFrog uh, attributed as a sponsor in the downloads page. We're using Artifactory. They have every right to want to be highlighted as a sponsor. Um, so this then took on the form of a discussion where uh, Basil had said, uh, suggested having a dedicated sponsors page, not unlike other projects and other uh, platforms. So that's where we're at at this point in time is Basil's created a draft sponsors page. So uh, we have this here um, to, I think I can go to the view or is it already linked in here, Mark? It is, uh, yeah, okay. at least that's Perfect. the prototype, right? Yeah. So here's the deploy link uh, to preview. So basically we have to figure out or uh, determine what levels of sponsors everyone is, assign them accordingly on the levels here. Uh, and we'll have a dedicated sponsors page to show showcase uh, all of the sponsorships that Jenkins has. Um, on top of that, uh, there's also discussion around whether uh, they are separate uh, sponsorship attributions on the download page itself and the root page itself, uh, in addition to having the dedicated sponsors page. Um, and based on JFrog's reasoning, I think it makes sense to have separate attributions as well as the sponsors page, um, whether or not they're included in that, uh, because the what the point being made was that uh, JFrog's not necessarily being used for downloads specifically. Um, so maybe not including them there, but whoever the downloads are sponsored by including them there. Um, now yeah, I'm seeing, yeah, so you're, 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 well, you're, you're describing the, the challenge on the downloads page, right? In the, in the original uh, issue that was submitted, 
it describes mm -hmm. that the downloads page, all of the links from that page go to locations that are not JFrog provided. And so, however, JFrog provides a lot of downloads for us because all Jenkins development is critically dependent on JFrog downloads. So, so the downloads page is a good high visibility place to talk about who provides our binary archives and who provides our binary archives for developers, it's JFrog. For users, it's DigitalOcean and these various mirror sponsors like the Oregon State University Open Source Lab, Xmission, Tsinghua, and Servana. So yeah, the, the the discussions are there, and we we don't have a we don't have a final solution yet. But I like and agree with the idea that we need to set levels and place sponsors here right now. If you go to the the root page www.jenkins.io in a separate tab, mm -hmm. we can look at what we have right now as a way to show our sponsors, and this is not nearly fine enough granularity. Right. I think Basel's correct to say that there we need more levels because the the contribution from open the OSL, the OSU open source lab, by the way, they're yeah, yeah, the open Oregon State University open source lab from OSL is very different from the contribution from CloudBees. Likewise, the Red Hat contribution is very different from JFrog's contribution. So so we've got levels that we need to highlight. And, and I think Basel's got a good idea. If you go back to the list in the document, he, he so all the way back to the, the meeting notes. Oh, okay. He suggested anchor, premier, partner, supporter, associate, and mirror. And, and that, that sort of aligns with at least some portion of the three levels that the CD Foundation has Premier, General, and End User. We could find a way to map those. Um, I think we need more than three. I'm not persuaded we need six. And that's that's where the okay. Why why am I saying that? Because there are criteria that that each of these have, and what I haven't done is express the criteria for those levels. And and the 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 criteria are the thing that really matter, right? What what would it mean to be anchor? And what would it mean to be a premier? And what would it mean to be mirror, et cetera? So can, can we describe each and every uh, support level by money? Or are some of these services, some of these support, um, do they always imply some money? Or and, are and the services, we don't know if that's the amount uh, of money it corresponds to? You, you, you hit it very, very well, Bruno. Many of these, many of our supporters we do not have a direct cash amount that we can mm -hmm. say, because let's take two examples, GitHub and JFrog, right? Both exceptional supporters of us, both really doing great things. GitHub hosts 2000 plus repositories for the Jenkins project, provides private hosting for security repositories, provides all sorts of capacity for us, but Monetary monetary assignment of that value is difficult to do. Mm -hmm. JFrog, likewise, they provide the entire service repo jenkinsci.org, and they don't tell us how much it costs them to do that. They just say, "Here's this service. We provide this to open source." So, but we can. We uh, part of me says we could do a financial approximation and say, "Hey, if we bought GitHub Enterprise." for the 600 plus Jenkins contributors, it would cost us this much a year. Mm -hmm. And and that then would give us a, a financial approximation. Uh, others, it's more difficult. How do we how do we do a financial approximation for the the mirrors hosted by the open op, the open source lab at o Oregon State yeah. University? And the answer is we could play approximation games with bandwidth use, but it gets complicated. So, so there's a piece of that where I think we can't do a simple financial mapping. There are others where I think we can do a financial mapping because we have exact amounts. The Continuous Delivery Foundation, we know what their contribution is to our infrastructure. Um, others likewise. 
uh, CloudBees donates a significant amount to, to Jenkins project infrastructure. Uh, CloudBees donates a lot of people to work on Jenkins. So there you have it. Does that, does that, does that, that tells why we don't have an answer yet, but I think yeah. we've got a, a framework for a discussion. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. That helped clarify a lot. And I think paint, uh, helped add a lot of context that I was potentially missing or just not didn't have. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for helping uh, paint that picture for everyone. And yeah, so there's a happy medium between three and six, I think. Four or mm. five. Probably. Well, and, and I'm but, not sure that the Basel's labels are interesting labels, but I, I need to do some research elsewhere to find, are there other labels that, that other projects use that might better map to us? And I, I just don't know. The word partner, for instance, is loaded with meaning and has caused grumbling in the Jenkins project in the past when anyone tried to use it as a way of saying we're a Jenkins partner. Because, because Jenkins does not establish partnerships, right? Therefore, the word partner may be overloaded, that those kinds of things. Yeah, definitely. So it's going to take some time, but we'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great, I think regardless of what the outcome is, it's a great idea and something that we should absolutely implement. So, right. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, next up on the agenda, Google Summer of Code 2024 prep work has begun. It's ongoing. Uh, Chris Stern is uh, leading the Google Summer of Code 2024. Really happy to have uh, them doing that. Thanks again to Chris for all the work. I, I can't say it enough today. Um, but yeah, so uh, work's being done there. Project ideas page is live. We've got about 14 ideas. Um, whether they all make it, we'll see about that. Uh, we are looking for mentors specifically for uh, any of the project ideas. By all means, if you feel intrigued, curious, or uh, even slightly interested, check out the projects page. See if there's something there that you might be interested in. Uh, the more support, the more people we have, the better it's going to be, the more likely it is to get picked up as a project. Um, and, you know, uh, if, at the end of the day, if one of the projects doesn't work out, um, that doesn't mean you can't join a different project and hop on there or become a mentor for a different project if it's uh, remotely interesting to you in that sense. Um, but uh, more information can be found on the Google Summer of Code page in Jenkins. Uh, the projects page will link to other project ideas and have more information on each of those. Uh, and you can see who's already uh, potentially signed up or uh, on board for that project. Uh, and then the last thing I have on the agenda for today is the version documentation site for Jenkins.io, still being worked on by Chris Stern and Vandit Singh. Uh, Vandit's working to update the documentation copy from uh, the latest changes that we've been going through on uh, Jenkins. And uh, yeah, they have the, the preview site available as uh, they have had. So it's looking really nice and uh, yeah, just looking forward to that. Uh, and that covers the agenda I had for today. Did anyone else have anything they wanted to add or discuss before uh, we wrap things up and stop the recording? I just wanted to tell you about a small anecdote. Uh, there was um, uh, um, a guy on uh, community.jenkins.io showing off an article he had written on Medium about Jenkins. So I dragged him by the collar and said, hey, what about making an article on Jenkins.io blog itself? He said, oh, yes, thanks a lot. I'm honored and so on. But I thought this would be, you know, the contributing guide would be kind of intimidating. Uh, it's not that easy to have a working environment on your machine to get Jenkins.io up and running. But he did it in a heartbeat. And there's already a PR, a draft PR existing on Jenkins.io. So I'm pretty happy with the way all of this went. Um, so yes, yeah, the contributing guide is kind of working and that's cool. Thanks, bro. Uh, I'm glad you pointed that out. I did see that earlier. I've been uh, working on the contributor pro spotlight stuff, so I didn't get a chance yeah. to review it yet. But no I, I, really cool that it's uh, someone cross posting from Medium to like have their that visibility come over and kind of expand upon that. That's, that's so cool. I'm really happy to have that. Thank you for advocating and uh, encouraging them to do do this. Good. Great. Right. All right, so that covers everything today. Uh, 
yeah, we'll stop the recording in just a moment here. It'll be available 24 to 48 hours as always. Um, Doc's Office Hours Asia is canceled uh, for to later today. Um, so that won't be happening. We'll be back next week. And um, yeah, until then, take care, stay safe. As always, uh, contribute to Jenkins whenever you feel like it or can. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks.